Good morning to a brand new day. Time to learn and games to play. Learning things is so much fun. Learning is good for everyone. Good morning, third graders. I am so excited to hear to have you here with me. My name is Mrs. Nix, and I need some help today. I was going through, I was thinking of some things that rhyme. We've got skate, late, what else? Oh, bait, that'd be a good one. Awesome, thank you so much for helping me out. I was practicing some of our puzzles that are found inside of our activity book and I got stuck. So thank you for helping me out today. Would you like to have one of these awesome activity books so that you can come up with some of the words that rhyme? It's super easy to do. All you need to do is send me a letter to the address that's popping up at the bottom of your screen, or do you see the e email address that is at the very bottom? Send me an email, but don't forget to include your return address, and I'll put one of these books in the mail for you. It's completely free. All right, in that letter, when you write it to me, it's super easy. You can decide, um, maybe you wanna share something that you've been learning at school, something you've learned here on PBS, or maybe it's a book you've been reading and you'd love to tell me the title of it so we can share it with other third graders. Now, where are you checking out your books from? Are you visiting the county library? Are you visiting your school library? Or maybe are you checking them out on the online app called Sora? I'd love to hear that too. All right, let's get started today. We have a whole bunch of stuff planned. I've got actually three goals for us today. I wanna to go through, we're gonna practice some final suffixes, um, or some suffixes, some final syllables, and then we're gonna end our day with idioms. Are you ready to start? Okay, let's warm up our brains. It sounds like Mrs. Nix needs to warm up her brain a little bit today by reading some of these high frequency words, those words we come across often in our reading and writing. I really encourage you, try taking some of these words and writing your own sentences with them. It just makes it so that it's more um, fluent for you as a writer. All right, here we go. Let's go through, let's read them together. Done, each, don't, eat, ate, down, even, draw, drink, and every. Nicely done, third grade. Let's go through, we're gonna practice these two words. So I've got draw, D-R-A-W, and even, E-V-E-N. Help me use them in a couple of sentences. She didn't, mm, try to help. Hmm. What do you like to, hmm. Okay, what do you like to even? Oh, that doesn't make any sense. How about, she didn't even try to help. Ooh, that makes sense. How about this? What do you like to draw? Ooh, I'd love to hear what you love to draw. That would be fantastic. Maybe you could share that in your letters. All right, let's go through and let's talk about some of these suffixes. Now, remember, we've been talking about this all year long, and especially in third grade, we're really focusing on those multisyllabic words. It's helpful for us as readers to know how to break apart words because remember what I said? We're working on being come, becoming amazing thinkers, readers and writers. So we wanna think about the words that we're writing and reading about. And by doing that, I wanna talk about the suffixes because suffixes can change a base word's meaning. And so it's important for us to understand what does that suffix really mean? All right, so remember a suffix is a group of words. They don't stand on their own, unlike a base word. A base word can stand all on its own. It has its own meaning, stands alone. Here we go. So let's look right here. We've got a door. A door can stand all on its own. Um, it means that we're, we're just admiring something. Um, now, able means that you're able to do something. So we can add um, able to a door and it becomes adorable. Now watch this with spelling. We wanna, when a word ends with an E, most of the time we drop that E before adding 
our suffix. So now we have the word adorable. Now, here's the word nerve, nerve. So mm, have you ever heard your mom say you're getting on my nerves? I hope not, but it does happen on occasion. And here's having the quality of is us. Now, this is where I'm going to change the whole meaning of my, of my word. Nerve is, a, is actually something that's found in your body. You have nerves. Um, but if you are nervous, again, ends with an E. We're going to drop that E before adding our suffix, and it becomes nervous. So we've actually changed our part of speech. And then the last one, is, the last suffix is Y, and it means full of. So we have the word ice. And so we're going to add Y, and it becomes icy. Again, ends with an E. We're going to drop that E, and then we're going to add our Y. So we have the word ice. So our icy, it means we're full of ice. My drink was very icy. It's full of a lot of ice. Okay, so um, just a reminder, we can change our part of speech by adding those suffixes. Okay, so let's go through and go on to our second piece today. And I want to talk about some syllable types. Now, we've talked about several of these um, in the past. We're down here. We're talking about our consonant um, plus l at the end. So whenever we have that um, final l sound in a word, we know that that's going to be our final syllable. So that's going to help us with our spelling, with our reading. So here are some examples. We've got bubble, circle, castle, we can see that that ul sound is at the end. I want to go through and I want to practice a few of these words together with you. So when we look here, we've got, um, I'm training my brain to kind of identify it. I can see the ul spelling pattern. I know that I want to include that consonant that's right before it. So I'm going to go gul. Okay, I'm practicing that with my, with my brain. So I can say gul. So what's my first syllable? E, right? Eagle, two syllables. Let's do it again. Now we've got bull. So we've got able, and now we've got two syllables. So practicing seeing these different ul sounds. So we've got dull and bull and gull. You can train your brain to be able to see them very quickly. It helps with sounding out of words. Now, what might this look like in practice? Let's go over here and let's give it a little practice. We've got some directions here at the top. It says write the word on the line and divide the syllables with a slanted line. So let's go through. Let's find those final syllables. Training our brains. Are we seeing it? Do you see the ul at the end? So where am I going to divide it? Don't forget to include that consonant that comes right before it. So we've got wis. Ol, okay? That T is kind of silent, right? We don't say whistle. So whistle, okay? How about this next one? What do we see? We've got the ol at the end, but don't forget, include that consonant right before. So global, well, just like that. Good. Then we've got, do you see the ol right there? Motel, it actually has an L sound. Motel, good. We've got ul at the end, including that consonant. So we've got tunnel, good. See the le at the end, include that consonant. So what's this final sound? Bull. So, ooh, this one's actually got multiple syllables here. So we've got bull, but I got a couple here too. Remember, I'm looking for my vowels. There's going to be a vowel sound in each of my syllables. So terrible. So I've got two consonants right here, so I know I'm going to be able to split it right here. Terrible. Terrible. Nice. It's got three. Ooh, here's another one. Critical. I want you guys to practice that one at home. Perfect. Looking down below, we've got a couple of um, challenges for us today. We're going to try and create the words using our suffixes that we just learned. So able, us. And, uh, and the Y, okay? So full of fury, if I look up here, O-U-S means full of, so my word is going to be what? You got it, 
fury, and I want to change my Y to an I, and add O-U-S because I'm full of fury, right? And able to be adored, all right? We did it earlier. It's adorable. So adore, remember to drop that E and add A-B-L-E at the end. Nicely done. Okay, here's our last part. For today, I want to talk about some figurative language, specifically idioms, and idioms are super fun. They're that way that authors have that opportunity to create a picture inside your mind as you're reading a book or you're reading um, a, a sentence that they've got for you. And I have an example. Now, a couple of things I do want to point out. An idiom is a special kind of non-literal language. That means something different from the meaning of each word in it. Okay, non-literal. It literally doesn't mean what it's saying. Let's look at an example. We're going to use some context clues to discover what it actually means. So, our life is the best life I can think of. It takes the cake. I know my parents made the right choice. Okay, so literally taking the cake is really, it's talking about a dessert, right? So, is it something for dessert? Is that what we're talking about in this sentence? No, it's a non-literal meaning. So when I look here, our life is the best life I can think of. It takes the cake. I have the best life ever. It means that it's the best choice possible, right? My parents did made the best choices possible. In I was, a, you know, and I know my parents made a right choice whatever it is that we did, right? So it is a non-literal um, meaning. But when we read it, we can get really excited. It's, a, a, you know, a fantastic, it takes the cake. It's the best thing ever. Okay, I have a few other idioms that you might try using in your writing. And I've got them written up here on this poster. Um, we've talked about a few of them. I think some, some fun things are like this one here, a drop in the bucket. So if you come across or you read something where you, they say, oh, that's just a drop in the bucket, you can see that it's a very small or unimportant amount in, in your writing. Or how about this one, a couch potato. Have you ever been called a couch potato before? Did you think that they really meant that you're a potato? Oh my goodness, no, it just means that someone who sits around on the table all day, um, maybe they watch too much TV, okay? But you can include some of these really fun idioms, even right here, idioms are a piece of cake. It's a way to include it. Make your writing fun and interesting. All right, hey third grade, I just wanna say thanks for hanging out with me today as you're getting ready for school. Remember, you're responsible for your learning success, so listen, ask questions and share your ideas because together we can do so much more. I can't wait to see you back here at PBS tomorrow with all of your ideas, all the things that we've been practicing and I look forward to seeing you then. So take care, stay safe, I'll see you then, bye-bye. A brand new day, time to learn and games to play. Learning things is so much fun, learning is good for everyone.